Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Gemology for Schmucks. My name is Peter Nelson, and I'm here to guide you in everything you need to know about gemstones and jewelry. I've been finishing up some projects recently, and so I started going through my stones looking for inspiration. And I found this sapphire that I've had in my box for years now. And I figured we just finished the star sapphire pendant, so why not continue with sapphire? There's so much to unpack, we might as well take it one step at a time. But I'm sure that some of you are saying, well, how do we know that it's a sapphire? Well, come on over here and let's test it together and let's see if you're convinced. Plus also, there's one feature in this stone, which is why I bought it, that can put those thoughts to rest very quickly. And I'll talk about that after we test it together. Now, fortunately for us, as we go to put this in the polariscope, we can see those interference colors, the rainbow colors showing up right through the table. So that makes it a lot easier for us. Even though this is a half carat, a relatively small stone, this time it is relatively easy for us to test using the polariscope. So we pull out the conoscope, our little magnifying glass, and once we get it lined up just right, we can see that we've got this cross symbol. Now, those of you who have seen my other videos will remember that this is the uniaxial sign, which is exactly what we'd be looking for if we were thinking this was a sapphire. But let's use deductive reasoning and find other evidence. So let's come over here to the refractometer. And there you have it, just what we would expect from a sapphire, 1.76, 1.77 by refringence of 0.01. I think I got the decimal right that time. And carefully moving the stone aside, clean the hemicylinder with a soft tissue so that you don't scratch the glass. So there you go. We've got some data to support our idea that this is corundum, which is great because I've already spent the money and the dealer told me that it was corundum, but rather than just trusting the dealer, it's good to know that we know. Because if this is a sapphire, it has to have these features. It's not going to have a different refractive index. It's not going to have a different optic character. It has to have these same characteristics. It's the nature of the crystal. But the reason that I bought this stone is because when we look at it up close, particularly if you have a loop, which you should, and if you don't, you need to buy one immediately. If we look at it in the right lighting conditions, we can see that there is a shiller, somewhat like with moonstone. But instead of being caused by the same things that cause the shiller and moonstone, this is caused by small needles. Perhaps if this stone was cut in a different way, it may have been a star, I don't know but it's already been faceted, so we don't really have that option. And frankly, it's cool as a faceted stone. Now, as we turn this stone, if we get it at just the right angle, we can actually see that these needles come up at a distinct intersecting pattern. Now, this stone was bought off of a Sri Lankan dealer, and Sri Lanka has many different colors of sapphires. So the reason that I think this is an amazing stone is because those intersecting angles are fairly unique to sapphire. Its crystal system is what causes those needles to intersect at that angle. So if I'm out in the field and I'm buying sapphires and all I have is a loop, if I can find these needles, perhaps in a different part of the stone, I can get a rather valuable stone and be sure that it's a sapphire and not some other type of mineral. That's what we call the inclusion scene. The inclusion scene helps me to know the identity of the stone and the nature of its treatment. Iridescent silk lead us to believe that the stone is untreated, unheated. Sure, it could be oiled or some of the other low temperature treatments, but it is a strong indicator for unheated. So as long as I can get it for a good price, which I definitely did, then I know that I can buy now before it disappears. So to talk about price versus value for a minute, this is a sapphire, absolutely, but because it is not blue, we're supposed to call it a fancy sapphire or use a colored term. So in this case, it is a purple sapphire. Now, a half carat blue sapphire in a beautiful cornflower would already be several hundred dollars, and this was cheaper than a date, especially if you're generous. But the value of this stone is that it showcases a rather attractive inclusion scene. If you have seen this inclusion scene in a stone that cost you a small nominal sum, once you see that in a more expensive stone, perhaps in an undistracting area, you can get high price point stones at very good value, perhaps cheaper than they would be if they hit the general market. If you're wondering to yourself, how can I notice when I find good stones out at jewelry shops or perhaps pawn shops, it's by building up those maps, those ideas, those understandings of the inclusion scenes of natural stones. Until you have that picture, that experience to draw on, you're not going to be able to notice those things in the wild. 
So this stone, I was asking myself, what do I want to do with it? And I was searching through my scraps, seeing if there was something I could repurpose, and I noticed this ring shank that back when I was working on sculpted laurel leaf, I started working on. And it just wasn't to my standard. I was so frustrated that I threw it into my scraps, didn't ever want to see it again. But as I pulled it out this time, I looked at it with an additional year or so of experience under my belt, and I go, I can still clean that up, actually. There's no reason that needs to be trash. So my plan is to clean this up, fashion a head for this stone, and put it together. If you want to see the finished product, you should be getting on my mail list. Head over to gemshepherd.com where you can sign up for that. When this ring is finished, it will be going there first for the members of that list. They have the first right to purchase. The rest of you, if you've got any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Hit like, hit subscribe, tell all your friends about me. Until next time, bye-bye.